Between 1553 and 1660, British merchants were granted permission to establish settlements on the West African coast, when interests lied more with produce than with the slave trade. Ivory, gold, pepper and indigo were supplied to them. A naval commander and chief architect of the English Navy, Sir John Hawkins was born in Plymouth in 1532. A second cousin to fellow seaman Sir Francis Drake, he became the first English slave trader. Starting in 1562, he brought slaves from Guinea, West Africa to the West Indies, then controlled by the Spanish. This voyage proved to be profitable and Queen Elizabeth provided financial support for a second expedition. During this expedition, he captured 400 Africans and sold them in modern-day Colombia. He went on four voyages overall and it is estimated that he moved 1,500 enslaved Africans across the Atlantic. Initially, the British traders brought slaves to the Spanish and Portuguese colonies in the Americas, but soon started supplying on British colonies once their settlements began to grow. The Navigation Act of 1660 allowed only English-owned ships to enter colonial ports. It is thought that over 10,000 British voyages transporting 3.1 million slaves to numerous parts of the British Empire happened between Hawkes' first voyage and the abolition of the slave trade in 1807. In 1619, the first group of enslaved Africans landed in the British colony of Virginia, known as indentured servants. However, by the 17th century, it was becoming increasingly obvious that this was slavery. King Charles II granted a charter to the group the Royal African Company to encourage the expansion of the slave trade. He also funded them. Led by the future King James II, the group had a monopoly on the gold, silver and slaves in the British trade with West Africa. The company transported about 5,000 slaves per year to the Caribbean colonies and Virginia between 1680 and 1686. These slaves would be branded with the company's initials on their chests. British colonisation of America began in the late 15th century and the first colony was established in 1607 and named Jamestown, Virginia, forcing the Native Americans to move west. Some natives traded with the settlers, acquiring new products such as guns, cloths, kettles and fur. In order to claim more land, the British secured three treaties, the Treaty of Albany, Treaty of Lancaster and the Treaty of Logstown. In the 1750s, the natives fought and defeated the French, claiming back some land. So in the 1760s, they then started to fight against the British. In 1673, an Ottawa chief named Pontiac led raids on British forts. Similar attacks happened on Western Virginia settlements led by Shawnee chief Kitukwa. As a result of the tension, King George III issued the Proclamation of 1763, which prohibited the settlement of the areas west of the Allegheny Mountains. Future President George Washington violated this by claiming large amounts of land in western Virginia. By the end of the 18th century, the black population in England reached 15,000, who lived mostly in major port cities such as London and Liverpool. Whilst some did work in paid domestic services, others did not. Many slaves were born in the Caribbean plantations and then brought to England to serve their master's family, even though slavery had no legal basis in England. The aristocratic families they worked for used them as a way to show off their wealth. Portraits and graves provide evidence of their presence in Britain. In portraits, slaves were well dressed and portrayed in the same way a pet would be. In 1770, the slave James Somerset escaped his master and was baptised, believing his Christian status would help win his freedom. He was then captured with the intention of being taken back to Jamaica as a slave labourer. However, with the help of abolitionists and freed black people, he was saved. In 1828, Mary Prince was taken to London from Antigua, where she was also escaped and published an autobiography in 1831. Scotland had a more progressive attitude towards black people, as those who entered the country became free. This was established in the Knight vs. Wedderburn case of 1778, after Joseph Knight escaped and fought for his freedom. 
Whilst the slave trade had been abolished in 1807, slavery in the UK was not abolished until 1833. The British government spent £20 million to buy the freedom of slaves using taxes and loans that were only paid off in 2015. This money went to compensating the former owners of loss of property. Ancestors of former PM David Cameron and authors such as George Orwell profited from the payouts. Alongside this, the free slaves had to commit to 6-12 to years of more service as unpaid apprentices.